Hi Shakers, in this video we're going to show you how to assemble a Raspberry Boom and a Raspberry Shaken Boom. Keep in mind that whenever handling the electronics, to use proper electrostatic discharge or ESD protection. If you don't, electric discharge from your fingers will damage the boards. And so here we have an anti-static mat and Don Alberto, who's going to be helping us today, is attached to ground and the mat is also attached to ground. Here we want to show you the difference between the Raspberry Boom and the Raspberry Shaken Boom. You'll notice that they're the, the exact same cards with the exact same dimensions. The difference is that the Raspberry Boom doesn't have this circuit populated with electronics. When you compare it to this one, you'll see that this one's full of little electronic bits. And so this is the circuit where the geophone enters, and that's absent from the boom card. Okay, the other difference between the Raspberry Boom and the Raspberry Shaken Boom is the base. The base on the Raspberry Boom has two slots where you can mount the Raspberry Boom, say, horizontally to the wall uh, or to the floor. And because the Raspberry Boom sensor, the infrasound sensor, is omnidirectional, you can have this mounted on the wall or the floor or just laying on your desk. Because the Raspberry Boom Shaken Boom comes with a geophone sensor for measuring earth motion, this one has to be mounted on the floor. Um, and so we've provided three places where you can put in leveling screws to level your Raspberry Shaken Boom. And before we get started assembling, I want to show you what we're working towards. This will be the final product. Uh, the Raspberry Boom won't have this sensor here. This is the sensor for measuring earth motion. And so you can see that the basic elements are the Raspberry Pi computer, which is the lower card here in green. The upper board is the Raspberry Shaken Boom board. The black sensor is the at one that measures atmosphere, it's the pressure transducer. This here is the geophone for measuring earth motion. And then this set of tubes, we call this the mechanical filter. And that comes out to an external nipple where you can attach an extension. Okay, these are the tools that you're going to need for assembly. The first one is just a normal screwdriver and you have a 2.5 millimeter hex drive and a 4.5 millimeter socket driver. All right, one more thing before beginning the assembly. You want to point out that with every Raspberry Shake, we send two mechanical filters. You'll notice that these are flexible tubes that have glass capillaries embedded inside. Now they're labeled yellow and red. Um, the red is for a one second filter and the yellow is for a 20 second filter. The 20 second filter is really only included for power users and people who have worked with infrasound in the past. The red one is the one that we'll be installing today. With both of these filters you should notice that they're labeled in two places. The second label up here towards one of the ends is where you'll be connecting the tube to the sensor inputs. Now we recommend using the 1 Hz filter which is the one here in red, as it is the most appropriate for hobbyist users. But feel free to swap it out with the 20 second filter. And if you do, just remember to go back into the web config settings and change the configuration of your Raspberry Shake from the 1 second to the 20 second filter. Okay, now Don Alberto is going to start with the assembly of the mechanical filter. you'll notice that the part of the tube that's being connected here doesn't have a, a band. But the, bands are, the band is towards this end. This is a second tube that doesn't have a capillary inside of it. Okay, so that is ready to be put over here on the board. Because all the components are plastic, we want to remind you to not use excessive force. In 
all cases with all of the screws hand tight is good enough. Okay, this green computer is the one that we call the Raspberry Pi. These can be done hand tight as well. There's no reason in any part of the assembly to use any excessive uh, force. Okay, the next part in this video is to attach the geophone sensor. So for the Raspberry Shaken Boom boards, you'll see that there is a green mounting place on the bottom of the board where you can put in the cables. It's very important that the cables are put in exactly as we'll show in a second here to ensure that you have the correct polarity. And so the gray cable, which goes from the plus here in the geophone, runs over here to the left-hand side, and then the blue cable is on the right, as you can see here. That, if you have that set up that way, you'll have the correct polarity. Notice the placement of the geophone cable on this side of the standoff. Okay, now we have a small laser cut piece that's going to hold the geophone in place. You want to make sure when you're doing this part that the, the support here does not pinch the cables. Now this part is very delicate. Notice the position of Alberto's hand when attaching the tube. He's holding the sensor and not the board. Use very little force in this case because it's very easy to push this sensor too far and break the point at which it's solar to the board. So be very careful with this step. Notice the placement of the tubes as well. The one with the filter, this little glass capillary, the label is at this end of the tube and it's attached to the top input of the sensor. If you switch these, then the polarity would be wrong. Okay, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're making your own enclosure, then we've provided some files online for you to do that. We provide the exact same STL and DXF files that we use to laser cut these enclosures, so you can use those as a starting point. But it is important to have an enclosure for the Raspberry Shake Board. The Raspberry Shake Board, if left uncovered, will produce some long period wander. And to ensure that the signal is of the highest quality, always operate the Raspberry Shake inside of an enclosure like the one you see here. Okay, the very last step is the little feet that are used for leveling the Raspberry Shake and Boom. These aren't present for the Raspberry Boom. And for those, we're using the 2.5 millimeter hex driver. The last thing you can do is remove the protective paper from the bottom. And that's it. Everything is assembled and ready to be plugged in.